creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. That's the Crown Act, Brian. It was passed in Kansas City a few months ago, and it's going to be reintroduced in the uh, Kansas legislature to prevent women and men from being discriminated based on natural hairstyles in the workplace and in schools. Something that is very necessary, Shay. Brian Talon Jefferson said she refused to remove a hair bonnet during an Ottawa University cheerleading practice because she was worried her long braids might hit a teammate. Mm -hmm. That discussion between the coach and herself led to an altercation that observers say was racist. Mm -hmm. Talon got kicked off of the cheerleading team after serving for over two years, and now she's looking to transfer schools. Good morning, Talon. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling okay. What was going through your mind when you first had the interaction with your coach? I was honestly just like, I was really confused and like taken back. I was embarrassed because, you know, my entire team was there. Just kind of confused at the things that she was saying, you know, making me feel really uncomfortable. I don't want to sound like Allen Iverson, but it's practice. We talking about practice right now. Yeah. From what I understand, you were aware that you would not wear it during the performance time, but this was something that you were wearing pre-competition. Me and other girls have worn bonnets before at practice. It's never been a problem. You know, we don't come to every practice game day ready or competition ready the same way as another girl wearing a headband at practice to hold her bangs back. Well, she probably wouldn't wear that headband at a competition. She'll put hairspray, pin her hair back and everything. So she's game day or competition ready. So I feel like it wasn't a big deal for me to be wearing the bonnet because I've done it before and I'm not game day ready at every practice. What was different about this particular practice in your opinion? There really wasn't anything different. The whole practice ran smooth up until the last about 45 minutes when that happened. And I don't know if it was like a power struggle because I wouldn't take it off. So that's kind of what led into the remarks being made about my hair and the bonnet. But... It's never been a problem before, so I don't know what the difference was that one day. Did any of the other cheerleaders come to your defense? Yeah, so one of my friends on the team and my roommate, who's also on the team, she also happens to wear bonnets, and she gets protective styles just like me. She felt some type of way about the situation, being that that could have been her. And so she's definitely spoken to coaches, spoken to administration, and everything to help out in the situation and spoken on my behalf. The coach in question, Casey Jamers, has since resigned and the university athletic director said quote they reluctantly accepted her resignation and that quote it was a loss to our community when we come back i want to find out how that statement made you feel talent junior college student talent jefferson she was formerly the captain of the ottawa university cheerleading squad she went to practice one day with a bonnet on to protect her hair and to keep from hitting other teammates with her long braids Mm. so her coach casey jameson made some remarks about her saying that she needed to remove the bonnet and she also said that why would you get seven foot long braids Mm. How did you take that statement? Um, I took offense to that statement specifically because I had already previously told her that my braids were 30 inches. So for her to say seven feet, I feel like it was her trying to be like smart or funny to try and kind of like mock me or something. So I definitely took offense to that. Talent, do you think that your coach recognized how black people do hair? Honestly, no. That's why during our conversation, I told her, like, we can stop talking about it because you don't understand. And I wasn't trying to, you know, be disrespectful by saying that. But it's something that she genuinely just does not understand, no matter whose hair she was doing as a cosmetologist or whatever. Like, I was implying that she would never understand how it feels to have hair this heavy or this feel on her head. And that was part of the back and forth, Brian. Uh, The coach said that she's a cosmetologist and she's done black hair. She also said she lived with a black girl for five years. So she's very familiar in the way that uh, hair is styled. The university says that they did a thorough investigation of this situation and found that there were no university policies that had been violated. How do you feel about that? I can't really say anything about how thorough their investigation was, I guess, on their side. I don't know fully what they all did. All I know is that 
nobody spoke to me, so I don't know how thorough it could have actually been if no officials at the school spoke to me about the situation. Nobody asked me my side of the story at all, so I can't really see how it was very thorough. But, I mean, if that's what they say, I don't know the extent that they fully went to. With the university official saying that Coach Casey Jamerson tending her resignation was a loss to our community, how does that make you feel as a student, someone who had been on that campus for three years, had been a cheerleader for more than two of those years? It made me feel, like, dismissible because, you know, that was only the coach's first year there. She hadn't even been there for a whole year. I had been at that school for two and a half years. I had contributed to two conference championships to bring home to the school. I contributed to going to nationals and helping the school and our cheer team play um, at nationals. So for them to say that it was a loss to their community, I felt like it was kind of a slap in the face because they kind of just dismissed me quick with like no hesitation. i tell you what. There's a nice school in Charlotte, North Carolina, right, Shay? It's called Johnson C. Smith University, HBCU. I know they got room for you. What's so ironic about what you're saying is I understand that she is looking to go to an HBCU mm. now mm -hmm. just yeah. because of the way that she was treated, the school she's, I don't know if I can tell everybody what school <laughs> you've been thinking about, but it's in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, we talk about this all the time, Talon, about how representation is important. No bigger example than this one right here. This is just, this just shocks me that people will still think this way in 2021. Even if you're ignorant on the subject, allow someone to educate you on it. This is the Crown Act in, in personification, yep. Brian. We just had Michelle on the show a couple weeks ago about the Crown Act and getting it passed in Kansas City. I want to make sure that we connect you with her. Shirley's Kitchen Cabinet is a nonpartisan political organization that looks to try to uh, make right wrongs that are done and they were partly responsible for getting the Crown Act passed in Kansas City. Now, as you're thinking about what's next for you, the fact that you now have to transfer, you're going to have to move your whole life in another space. Are you feeling hopeful about this or do you have some sort of mixed feelings about having to be separated from Ottawa University? I mean, I'm always hopeful. I'm always staying optimistic. Everything happens for a reason. It is kind of sad that like I'm having to leave all my friends that are on the team here. I've made like great friendships with a lot of people that are going to remain on the team. Um, and I didn't plan to leave Ottawa. I planned on being there all four years and cheering and graduating. But everything happens for a reason. I guess I just wasn't meant to be at Ottawa anymore. If you had an opportunity to speak with Coach Jamerson, let's say she's listening, what would you want her to know? This has been a really big learning experience for me, so I hope it has for her as well. Just, like, educate yourself. Not that I think that she was being malicious at all times. I think she was saying she should just educate herself on why sometimes you have to watch what you say to certain people because you never know how you're going to come off. Good luck going forward. We appreciate you for sharing your story with us. You're beautiful. Your hair is beautiful and you are good enough. Thank you so much for coming on the show. If you need anything on your way off to school, hit us back up because Brian, he's got a big, big wallet and I'm going to make sure that he gives you something. <laughs> for talent, I, I, I hook her up. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I got you. Seriously, we want to make sure that you go off to school with everything that you need and that you're not in the negative after this change. So seriously, Seriously, let's keep in touch. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.